This is Court TV's Inside America's Courts. From our New York studios, Greg Jarrett and Jamie Floyd. Hello and welcome. He is a mysterious martial arts master. But he may have found his match in the U.S. government. He's accused of scheming to avoid a fortune in taxes, and now in addition to being a master of martial arts, he's accused of being a master of fraud. And some former members of the school claim they were brainwashed into paying the price. This is what I paid $15,000 for. 33-year-old Russ Johnson started in the Korean martial art Chung Mu Kwan when he was 16. I resent uh, everything that the bell has stood for now. He says this black belt is all he has to show for his eight years in the school. This and the scars on his arms, souvenirs of 100 push-ups that almost killed him. These are the push-ups that the school had me do for discipline that injured my arms. It constricted the blood flow, and that blood flow made my muscles start to die. The only thing they could do is cut my arms open and release the pressure. This is the man Russ Johnson blames, the man he used to call Master, John C. Kim. I believe that he is a classic cult leader. Other former Chung Mu Kwan instructors and students have similar feelings. Some of them requested anonymity fearing reprisals against themselves or their families. After you left, were there any threats made against you? Oh, absolutely. Death threats. They would uh, try every intimidation trick that they could. Okay, switch feet. The government says John C. Kim's Chung Mu Kwan organization runs more than 30 schools in at least five states. Kim claims the schools are independently operated. He just licenses them. Former students we spoke with don't question its effectiveness as a martial art. They do question the motives of the men in charge of the organization. They're conning people. They would beat you up physically, you know, if you didn't do whatever they wanted you to do. They'd do anything, even kill somebody. It fits every single definition of a cult, which I have studied. Was it like a brainwashing? His whole life was waiting for someone else to dictate to him what to do, when to eat, when to move, when to breathe. Former Chung Mu Kwan students tell us they joined to better their lives. They say they were told they'd eventually make a lot of money if they stuck with the organization. They hope to improve themselves through the power and knowledge attributed to the master, John C. Kim. He would just make you feel like he was so much above you that you couldn't even comprehend, begin to comprehend his knowledge. It was said that he had uh, a lot of healing powers, that he could essentially heal anything. That he could read your mind. It slowly brainwash you to the point you believe anything they tell you. Former Chung Mu Kwan students tell us the organization used intimidation and mind control to get to their wallets. I saw students ask if it was okay if they could get married. I saw students ask if it was okay if they could date. Uh, I heard another instructor ask if it was right if he had children. They controlled the way I slept. They controlled the way I walked into a room. They controlled everything I did. What do you think they wanted from you overall? The money. That's it? It's that simple? Yes. And they got $30,000 from you. Correct. The organization supposedly made a point of signing up higher ranking students for higher priced courses. Ten, fifteen, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 and more. That's all they wanted was your money. Money is at the heart of the federal charges against John C. Kim and some of his top instructors. The alleged tax fraud conspiracy might never have been uncovered if it wasn't for one woman. The same school officials threatened me if I pursued this investigation. Chicago investigative reporter Pam Zekman exposed what she called the cult and the con seven years ago. Get out, get out, get out of here. Zekman's reports led to this raid in 1990 when lawmen swooped in on several schools in Illinois. They were looking for evidence that John C. Kim and some of his top instructors hid a lot of income for almost 20 years. Only portions of that cash would be reported to the IRS. The rest of it would be skimmed, not reported, and used for various purposes, including the purchase of property. The government claims Kim and his colleagues may have skimmed millions. Former students tell us they were discouraged from paying with anything other than cash. They said, do you think this money goes to Uncle Sam? And I said, I'm not sure. And he said, for what? He says it's better for it to go in the right direction and then point it at John C. Kim's picture. Did you tell your instructors to skim money? No. We tried to get some answers from Master Kim when he appeared in Chicago in September for the first day of his trial. The Did government you... says that you defrauded the government over a period of 20 years, that you skimmed money. What's your comment to that? No. Did you do anything wrong? 
No. Six former Chung Mu Kwan members pled guilty before trial. Kim and six others fought the charges. If convicted, they each could face five years in prison and a $250,000 fine. My daughter's a Christian. My wife is a Christian. When we caught up with Kim in the courthouse lobby, the 63-year-old master denied running a money-hungry cult. Mr. Kim, did you brainwash students? I don't know. I don't even know what brainwash is. They believe that you have some kind of supernatural no, power. No, I have a hard time to speak English. I don't have any superpower. Kim says he's making just enough to survive. Survival apparently includes this home in San Diego, where Kim was arrested in the tax case in April 1995. They're just ruining people's lives just for their financial gain. Court papers reveal the government's theory about Kim's motive. Kim allegedly believed his sister's husband, an American GI, had disgraced Kim's family. So Kim came to the United States, quote, to screw the American people in revenge. Kim denies it. I love this country, otherwise, otherwise I'm, I'm here. I would like to see Kim get convicted, and I'd like to see him serve some time for what he has done to people. I believe that he came over here with a plan to um, uh, con American people out of their money. They, they, they are lying. Did you skim taxes? Did you skim? Nice meeting you. After a trial that lasted more than three months, jurors reach a decision. Why did you have people pay in cash? Was that to defraud the government? So, do jurors agree with the government that Kim's schools made him a master of fraud in addition to a master of martial arts? We'll have the verdict when we come back. Stay with us. The U.S. government says John C. Kim was running a money-hungry martial arts cult. Kim never takes the witness stand but denies it all outside of court. The trial finally ended earlier this month. Alan Levine has the verdict in the case against Kim and some of his top disciples. Kim had an extraordinary amount of control over these people and they were extremely loyal to him. At trial, former Chung Mu Kwan instructors testified that John C. Kim conducted loyalty tests. They say he told them to choose between leaving the school and death. They chose death. Kim then allegedly choked them, releasing just before they blacked out, and told them they had passed his test. These were the people that defendant Kim depended upon to operate his schools and skim his cash for him. Former instructor and school owner Alex Gutierrez testified how student cash payments were coded to record just a small fraction of the actual income. This former student showed me copies of records and explained the system. The course was $100 a month for this particular student, but the school, school just coded it at that time as a dollar. We presented evidence from people who said that they skimmed money on your orders. It's lie. More than three months after the trial starts, jurors reach a decision. John C. Kim and four top instructors, guilty. But afterwards, Kim still maintains his innocence. It's not fair. No. Why isn't it fair? Because it's not true. Well, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Chicago tells us the martial arts master is now behind bars awaiting sentencing in April. Two of his instructors will be retried because the jury could not agree on their fates in this case. Jamie? A fascinating case. Thanks, Alan.